So uh, video game movies are all the rage now. It seems like a bunch of companies are taking advantage of the fact that people want to see game movies with the success of the Sonic movies, the uh, Mario movie, and currently the uh, Final Fantasy movie, as well as I guess Detective Pikachu if you count that. It seems like a bunch of uh, companies are trying to get video game movies out. But let's take a look at the first ever one, technically speaking. Well, it came out at the same time as another movie, which I don't even know what it is. I don't even know what it is. Like, I'm not even joking. Like, you, you, I don't even know, remember the title. That's how obscure it is. But yeah, and uh, some company decided that they got the rights to make a little uh, animated movie off of Super Mario Bros., which just came out like a year, year after it came out. And uh, yeah, what we got was the Super Mario Bros., the Great Mission to Rescue Princess Peach, which is a very weird movie, and it was never actually released in North America. We've got a fan dub we're going to look at, though I will be uh, look. I have a look at the uh, sub version. I'm a stupid American, so I like the dub version. Plus, it's funnier <laughs> that way. It's not an official dub, but just keep that in mind. But yeah, let's take a look at the first uh, ever Mario movie. It predates the uh, the '93 one, and of course the uh, 2023. Though the uh, the, 20, the, uh, the animated 2023 one, the modern one, she has a lot of similarities with this one. It's pretty interesting. But unlike the '93 one, this one is very much in the universe of Mario, which is good because I like the Mario universe. You're watching Mario gameplay right now. Link to the footage in the description below. Uh, yeah, let's get into this. Stop. Let's stop rambling and let's take a look at this movie. Is it good? Is it bad? Or is it batshit insane? Let's find out. So the movie starts off with uh, Ness running through the jungle. Just kidding, this isn't Ness because this predates that character. Uh, Mario is playing on his Famicom. Not any NES because this is Japanese. You can see the Famicom right there. And uh, yeah, this seems to be a trend of all the movies that Mario, I think Luigi is playing game, the, the 93 movie. But uh, yeah, that Mario plays Nintendo games, which is kind of weird. And I just like, it's. You know, you know what I mean? It's like, how can he be playing in a game if he is a game character? It's one of those things that's like kind of baffling. And uh, yeah, but all of a sudden his game changes to uh, Peach getting chased by some Koopas and some Troopas. And well, the animation isn't that great. It looks okay, but sometimes the movement can look batshit insane, as it, as you can probably tell from there. And uh, Mario gets uh, landed on, which is a great treat for him. So yeah, Mario instantly thinks that Peach is super hot because uh, she is in this movie, unlike the 93 movie, which didn't have Peach at all for some reason. Of course, you know Peach is in this movie because she, her name's in the title. And Mario starts blushing because uh, Peach because it compliments his mustache. I actually forgot what happened to this movie. So, uh, not only does Peach come out of the TV, but Bowser, who is fucking ginormous, and oh my god, he's licking his lips, but oh my god, he actually looks like Bowser! Remember in that shitty 93 movie where he looked like a piece of shit? But no, he's a giant turtle, and he has a really, really bad voice in this movie. I mean, it is an unofficial dub, but it is so bad. Hey, sweetie, please don't make such a mad face. Cheer up, okay? So, uh, Mario tries to fight Bowser, but because he's, like... Uh, really small, he just gets instantly owned. And Peach finds all of that furniture, and yeah, they go back on the TV, and Mario's got to figure out how to save Peach. It's the Great Mission to Rescue Princess Peach, after all. That's the title. So uh, here's a weird change. Instead of being plumbers like they are in pretty much every version of the Mario universe, they own a grocery store, which is really weird. Also, Luigi has a weird color scheme. It's blue and yellow for some reason. This color scheme actually made it to one of Luigi's alternate skins. Anyway, Mario's tipping over Peach. He has his neck, her necklace, and he's not paying attention to his customers and all that other bullshit. Also, for some reason, it's really dusty in here because for some reason they breathe a lot of smoke here. This one scene, these have all these puff clouds come out of their mouths, and I have no idea why. It doesn't make any sense. So this really weird Wiggler dog, which is very uh, weird design. It doesn't, it doesn't look like a Mario character. Let's just say that. It looks a little bit like a Wiggler, but it doesn't look like a dog. But yeah, it attacks Mario and steals a gem. And unfortunately, this, this weird dog character is going to be a main character. In fact, it's going to become an infamous character, at least in a small Mario community, who know about this movie, which isn't a lot. And Luigi brings a shovel. Now, that shovel is very important, because that's all Luigi ever uses in this movie, is a shovel. Why? I have no idea. So they chase the dog into a gray pipe, not a green pipe. 
into the Mushroom Kingdom. Yeah, it's the reason it's a gray pipe. I don't know why. It's gray. So this weird wizard guy appears, and he's like, uh, you guys are, gotta say Peach, but they're excited because there's a bunch of coins around, which is true. And the Mushroom Kingdom has a crap ton of coins all over the place. I mean, have you played New Super Mario Bros. 2? There's like a billion coins. Thinking about Peach being locked out makes Mario become a Mexican. Why? Uh, I don't know. Mario's into cultural appropriation, apparently. So they uh, travel through the Mushroom Kingdom, which looks like uh, stuff you would see in a Yellow Submarine, the movie. You ever see the movie? It's pretty good. But yeah, it's very weird. I mean, it is the Mushroom Kingdom, so I guess it makes sense. So, uh, we're introduced to these two Goombas who appear at, throughout most of the movie, just like fucking Mario and Luigi by playing pranks in them. They're, they're Bowser's minions, you know. That's how Goombas work in this universe, they, they pull pranks. So yeah, Goombas in this movie are clever and crafty, while in the 93 movie, they're stupid. So which one would you rather watch? Well, I'll tell you what I'd rather watch. Mario dreaming about a mushroom, that's what. Here's a fun fact, Paracoopas are apparently birds. They're just not turtles with wings, they are birds, they're, they're, they're babies, they're, they're clearly birds. For all that bird crap, they find uh, this mushroom thing, which turns out, does stuff. It is the soul of toads. And yes, there are toads in this movie, and they don't have a weird swirly haircut and turn into a Goomba later on like that one other movie that I keep referencing. And they also have a really bad dubbed voice actor, because why wouldn't they? So this movie is really weird. They go on a bunch of weird little things that they fight enemies. The Goombas come back and fuck with them. Uh, yeah, they're basically the whole point is they gotta find three weapons, which are the uh, the power-ups from the first Mario game. The Mushroom, the Fire Flower, and the Stuff! But it's just a lot of them fighting random Super Mario Bros. enemies. Not the Goombas, they just fuck with him. The, uh, the other enemies, basically. Like here, they fight Piranha Plants. And then they fight Lakitu and his Spinies. His Lakitu's a really weird character. He's like obsessed with flowers for some reason. I have no idea why. Be prepared to see this walking animation. They reuse it like three times in the movie. Also, throughout this entire movie, Luigi's just digging for coins, like all the time. Like, it's such a weird character uh, thing for him to have, but in this whole movie, he's just, he's just greedy. Is this Luigi or Wario? Also, some weird uh, brand thing. Uh, Mario had, like, had like a ramen noodle promotion at the time, so they kept the promote it, like, really heavily there, and that's why Mario's on the package of those ramen noodles. <laughs> I think those bo boxes are worth money now, because everything like that is worth money. Well, food products, who know? If they had a character's face on it, it's worth some money. So the Goombas trap them in a cave where they can't leave, and this gets them upset. We get to see Peach hoping for Mario to come save her, and uh, she'll talk about how she likes once Mario, and Mario will be like, oh, I want to be with Peach, a little movie. And this is going to come for a twist at the end of the movie where it turns out this, 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 this basically is really stupid, and the, probably the, the most remembered thing about these, this movie. And of course Bowser, like Bowser always does, is trying to... Uh, to be with Peach, but Peach isn't into a turtle dick, unfortunately for Bowser. Also, in this movie, Bowser has the ability to transform. Like, he can change his appearance, like, like automatically, which is really, uh, really weird. And Peach tries to trick him, but it doesn't really work, because he can easily transform to where the hell he wants, including someone's fetish. Also, that, the trap they were supposed to be in didn't really last long, because Luigi has his weird digging equipment like all the time, so what do you expect? And after a whole weird outer, underwater segment with bloopers and jeep sheeps, they find this sunken ship that can fly from the skies, and they're headed right towards Bowser's castle to stop a wedding. If this plot sounds familiar, uh, Bowser having a wedding, uh, them trying to rescue somebody going for the Mushroom Kingdom and fighting a whole bunch of weird enemies, it's basically because the, the new Mario movie has very similar plot, and them appearing in this world a pipe after uh, getting inter interrupted from their normal job. You know, it, it sounds very similar to the Mario movie. I mean, it is a Mario movie, but you get it! Meanwhile, it's Bowser's wedding. He's got all his Koopas, his Hammer Bros, all of them to celebrate the uh, marriage between him and Peach. So, uh, yeah, Mario just in a Luigi and the weird dog destroy the castle. Mario decides it's time to fight Bowser. He eats the mushroom, he eats the flower, he's about to eat the star, but he gets knocked out. 
because he decides that it's very important for him to eat the sponsored food product of the day. They really like shoving that down your throat. That is really, really, really shameless plug. By the way, this looks familiar is because they use this exact same scenario the Mario, the new Mario movie. Mario is almost feared, but he gets the star, and after he gets stumped out by Bowser, he gets back up, obviously, because he got the star, and beats up Bowser. I mean, I mean, right now, it looks like Bowser's winning, but trust me, he, he comes, like, look, there he is, he's pulling him up. Of course that was going to happen. I mean, what'd you expect, Bowser to win? So Mario's like, so long, gay Bowser! And he throws him like he does in Mario 64. Except this came out before Mario 64. So maybe Mario 64 kit got it from this. And also, uh, he, Bowser's a firework now. So by uh, yeeting Bowser into the atmosphere, for some reason, that causes the scenery to have flowers and a castle. It makes a whole lot of sense. So this whole movie sets up Mario and Peach like they're going to be a couple, but Peach is like, if someone had this amulet, that would be my true love, or my prince. And it turns out, uh, uh-oh, someone does have it, and it's the fucking dog. Yeah, that stupid blue dog thing, it turns out that that isn't a fucking dog. It is. It is. It's, it's taking forever for him to, to spawn, and we'll give him a little bit of time. A ugly prince. Like, it is, it is disgusting looking. This guy only appears in this movie, and I'm not sure if this is correct, but Miyamoto hated this guy. It hated the fact that he was supposed to be with Peach, I think. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I, I don't know how much involvement Nintendo had with this movie, but uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure that is correct. But yeah, this guy never appears outside of this movie, so it wouldn't be surprising if that's the reason why. Yeah, and that was the end of Super Mario Bros. The Great Mission to Rescue Princess Peach. It is very okay. Uh, unfortunately, the dub isn't that great. It is a fan dub. It's not the worst, but it's not the best. The animation is good, but it does showcase that it was cheap was cheaply done. Not in a terrible way. Uh, Japanese animators know how to cut corners better than American animators. Let's just say that. Uh, but it's a very interesting time capsule, but it's not really that worth going back to. To be honest, unless you're really into Mario, it, it, that's the only reason I would say to look into it. And that Prince guy is probably the worst aspect. He's such an ugly character, and for, for, for them to set up Mario and Peach being together, it, it's, it, not, it doesn't really do that, that well, but this that random dog, like, I always hate it. There's another, there's a book series, they called the Matic Treehouse. I'm not sure if anyone remembers that, but there's a dog in there that turned into human, and I always hated that as a kid, so I hate that aspect. Dogs are better than people, and it's just, I always think it's a weird concept for them to do that. Especially when it doesn't really make any sense. This is a really old movie, but actually there's one last twist in this movie that we're about to see. So let's go see that, shall we? Back at the grocery store, the old woman comes back to get her groceries. But guess who is it, who's there? It's not Mario and Luigi. It is none other than, fat, than in fact, the king of the Koopas himself. Bowser, and of course he's called Koopa in this because it's a Japanese dub, and the woman just just games over, I guess. She's scared of Bowser. That's weird. All right, uh, I give Super Mario Brothers: Great Mission to Rescue Princess Peach from 1986 a six. I wish I'd give it higher. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. Uh, in the future, but it is more interesting as a uh, piece of Mario history than as a movie itself. I'll just say that. Most of the middle of the movie is just kind of like meandering and some weird crap. But yeah, not bad, but not the best in the world, if that makes any sense. Stay tuned for next time when we review whatever else I review. Goodbye. Make sure you donate to the Canada Desi Toys and Games on Patreon so they can afford some pizza over there and keep the lights on. Thank you so much for watching this video.